Hello everybody, it's Mike Levin. Wednesday, August 10th, 2016, at about 6.30 p.m. I'm on my way to the Catskills. I'm taking tomorrow off. Tomorrow is uh, Thursday, so uh, I won't be seeing Addie uh, this weekend. Ooh, that's thunder. So I'm uh, scooching on up there now taking one vacation day so that I spend tomorrow with her while she's at her swimming class that her grandparents are uh, putting her uh, in up there where they live and uh, let's see um, Smallwood I believe it's called Smallwood which is a little uh, lakeside community out there near Monticello Casino, which I guess is the closest thing that anyone would know to where this thing is. Um, and it's, you know, the Shawangunk Ridge, really. People call it the Catskills. That's thunder. Hope I get to the car before it starts to rain. Gee, that'll make an interesting video. So, subject of this video. So, you're getting ready to learn how to program. There's so much information. There has been so much. There is so much new stuff always coming out. Everything seems like it's a, a moving target and you have to follow a rolling fad. And if you don't have the basic skill sets, the foundation, to hop on to the next fad, whatever it is, Ruby on Rails, Node.js, that you won't really have the skill set to stay viable. So, a lot of people who highly specialize on some platform, say PHP, you know, fads change. Things go in style, things go out of style. You're stuck going like, what now? What do I do? And uh, so I'm here to just offer a few opinions. All you're going to find are opinions. There is perhaps some kernel of, you know, objective truth behind all this stuff. Like, there is such a thing of, as code. Uh, code does run on machines, but almost everything else is up for interpretation. See you. Uh, I'm not going to do a line item list of every single language, although uh, that would be the temptation. I would have something to say about each, uh, whether or not I ever programmed in it, like Haskell. Uh, it's a, a very popular language with people who really want to feel and get and experience the best that you can from a functional style programming environment. Functional being uh, functions tend to not have any side effects. State is not a uh, persistent thing. After each function returns its value, everything having to do that with that function is uh, no longer present in the machine's memory. And so it's a great way of creating, you know, theoretically bug-free code, stuff that you can really trust with uh, mission critical uh, systems that only need a reboot, you know, once a decade or so because they're just that reliable. Uh, code that's really that bug free and, uh, you know, continuously running. There's a lot to be said for that approach, but it's just not, uh, as the Pythonistas would say, very practical. Uh, it's much better to not design your whole system around edge cases, but rather to design your system around the most common use cases uh, that you or anyone else is, is going to encounter in coding. And so, this discussion always gets to a discussion of abstraction and the granularity of abstraction uh, layers and uh, how they are uh, kind of show up as uh, APIs. The granularity of your abstraction is uh, also the API of whatever it is you wrote, how it interacts with the world, and what others are going to have to interact with and deal with and cope with. So, very often, uh, designing good systems is a matter of designing uh, good APIs uh, that are suitable for the most common use case conditions. The things that uh, most people have to do most of the time for most tasks in most disciplines. And, uh, you know, generally that's managing lists, so let's make managing lists easier. And uh, 
there's that's been going on for a long time a lot of languages have list the concept of lists and parsing and processing and handling and transforming them in mind uh, one of the granddaddy languages lisp and then there's a uh, tcl i believe the l in there is for uh lists and then there's perl which uh you know i forget the exact uh uh, joking acronym, but one of them, uh, one of the letters is for Lister, uh, pathologically ec eclectic something uh, Lister. So arguably Pearl has Lister in, in the core concept, and even the name, and uh, many other languages have Lisp processing, and Python does that sort of Lisp processing really, really well, and has incorporated concepts such as Lisp comprehensions, which let you do a, a map reduce filter process on a list in a very extremely uh, efficient compact fashion and all these subtle API decisions compound on each other uh, I just recently learned decorators Python decorators And uh, before decorators, uh, I learned uh, named tuples. And uh, let's see, uh, more about the importing of modules to make them uh, more interesting and understood to me from an object-oriented perspective. And these delights just never stop coming that consistently uh, show me just how well suit suited uh, the Python programming language is for so many things, and sure there's edge cases where it's not the best possible language to handle concurrency or parallelism, other stuff probably. Uh, but for most of the things most people have to do most of the time, uh, Python is a really good first go-to language. It won't let you down, and you will find massive support for it in a delightful ecosystem and set of uh, packages for every last thing you might need to do. Uh, you're never alone with Python and the solutions you find are quite time-tested and hardened in many cases. Well anyway, gotta go. Uh, thanks for joining me. Hope to talk to you again soon and don't forget to subscribe.